Thanks for staying on joining us today. We'll quickly take you to Parliament now. A while ago, Foreign Affairs Minister Shelley Ayokobutri disclosed that the Gitmo two who came into the country two years ago have now received refugee status here in Ghana. The minority leader, Harun Idrisu, is commenting on that disclosure. No matter for discussion about their exit. Ah, this is minister's statement. It's not my statement. It's minister's statement. Honorable minister's statement that she just read. So, you see, when a blind man says you throw a stone at you, he must be stepping on it. In this matter, you are not stepping on any stone. And you say you take the terrorists away. Take them away. You had an agreement. You were the blind people. No stone under your leg. And in Africa, I will end with another proverb. It's only a blind fool that you step on his something two times. I mean, if you can't see, if you can't see, can't you feel it? If you can't see, can't you feel it? So, Mr. Speaker, you knew, I'm quoting, that there was, even the, the matter, Mr. Mr. Speaker, the matter they have brought to the fore was a foreclosed matter as far as the U.S. is concerned. And indeed, in the agreement that we ratified, Mr. Speaker, there was room to integrate them into Ghana. That is why it is not legally wrong, not morally wrong, to grant them refugee status because the fundamental object was to integrate them. How do you integrate them? How do you integrate them? Mr. Speaker, if we are not obliged, if we are not obliged, why was this parliament invited to ratify and not to reject it? So, Mr. Speaker, I, in concluding, in concluding, I can only agree that I wish that the debate on this matter was not partisan. And I wish that we had not reduced the country to previous government and current government. As if the approval and disapproval, deportation and admission of Gatme to how does it improve the quality of the Ghanaian? That, yes, that today, the parliament of Ghana, you want to take credit. The MPP say they want to take credit. Take, it's your credit. Take them and send them away. Every credit you want, you have it. You are taking credit that they are refugees. If you don't record, want to recognize them as refugees, the law is in your hands. But Mr. Speaker, this parliament, we must take our own selves seriously. Parliament ratifies something. Why did you ratify it? It was brought here by the executive. But I should conclude on a very good note. Yes. The Honorable Ambrose, the Minister for Interior, made a significant comment. And Mr. Speaker, that is what should guide us. What was before the Supreme Court? And again, when you say the people of Ghana did not know anything about this uh, matter, how then were those Ghanaians able to go to the Supreme Court to question it if they had no knowledge of the matter? <laughs> they had no knowledge of the matter, yet they could go to the Supreme Court to question the matter. <laughs> so, Mr. Mr. Speaker, but he made a point. I think what went to the Supreme Court was a matter of whether an international agreement of that nature per our governance structures and governance processes was satisfactory and complete if it did not have parliamentary approval. To which the Supreme Court gave a certain ruling, which I agree with and I agree with him. So that was the vexed issue. So you don't come and reduce the pursuit of foreign policy to NDC and Pipicales. Unfortunate for our republic. Very, very unfortunate. Foreign policy, Mr. Speaker, you've been a diplomat. The U.S. remains our strongest bilateral partner. You need them today, you need them tomorrow. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I think, I think that what this foreign minister should be inviting us to do, for which we will support her, 
is that the time has lapsed. Thank you. Do we grant an extension? I thank you, Mr. Speaker. The minister is the minister of foreign affairs or the minister responsible for foreign affairs. She is not the foreign minister. She is not. indicates to us that he wished that the debate on the statement was not reduced to partisanship. The speaker, our orders are clear. And for the 72 provides that after a statement has been made, we can only comment. It is not subject to debate. So they got it wrong at the very outset when they believe that they should subject the debate. And that is exactly what they did. Mr. Speaker, the orders provide and for emphasis in Order 72, a Minister of State may make an announcement or a statement of government policy. Order. Any Order. such announcement or statement should be limited to facts which it is deemed necessary to be made known to the House and should not be designed to provoke debate at this stage. The speaker, so the minister came and fed us with facts. Nothing more, nothing less. That is how people should understand it. The speaker, the minister informs us, and I believe it is very important to recognize this, that the content of the agreement there appears to have been an extension to it. Indeed, the speaker on February 19, 2016, when the then minister responsible for foreign affairs came to this house, she spoke to us about a note there, but which had occasioned the acceptance of the two people. Mr. Speaker, when she came to this house and spoke to us, she did not brief us about the refugee status of the two. Because, Mr. Speaker, at that time, the, the refugee status had not, been, uh, had not been granted to them. So the information that was given to this house, which all of us are privy to, did not contain the fact that refugee status had been granted to the two um, people who are come here who have been accepted into the system. It is in July, we are told, July 21st, 2016, that they were accorded refugee status. So what would have expected that in the handing over notes, this additional information would have been provided to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. This, unfortunately, was not transmitted. It was not part of the handing over notes. And that is a tragedy. The speaker, and that is why it is surprising to hear from the Honorable Okujito who says that the minister is springing this on us as a surprise. Yes, indeed, it's a surprise to this nation because on the day of handing over, this was not part of the handing over notes to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And the question to ask is why was this kept 
as a secret from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. That is what we should interrogate. Because that is where the problem emanates from. Why should you? Because this is a very serious issue. You have moved a step further to grant refugee status to the people on 21st July 2016. We in Parliament didn't know because when you came here, the Speaker, that had not been done. We had committed ourselves to a two-year period ending January 6, 2018. And then in between that time, you go and grant refugee status without informing the good people of this country and without providing additional information to this house and without informing the ministry. What was the intent behind that? What was the intent behind that? The speaker, so we should interrogate that. What informed that? And the Honorable Okujeto tells us that is a surprise. Yes, he, is, he himself is hearing for the first time that refugee status has been granted. That's the obvious implication of the statement that you made. I said that, is, I didn't say you said that. I said that is the obvious implication. This thing, teaching English. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, so all of us, all of us should be worried that such an important information was kept on the blind side of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We should question why they chose to do that. And that is why it cannot be true. That is why it cannot be true that the position of the NDC and the position of the NDP are the same. They cannot be the same. When you elect to hide vital information from a succeeding administration, that certainly is dangerous to this country. That certainly is dangerous to this country. Mr. Speaker, and the Anabu Ayariga, I'm quoting his words, he said, there is no reason why the people should remain in this country. As part of his contribution, he said, there's no reason why, and I'm quoting him verbatim, there's no reason why the people should remain here in this country. If indeed that is true, how do you situate that in the context of the refugee status that the government of yesterday granted them? We can't blow hot and cold. And we should not be playing to the gallery when the facts point to a different direction. We cannot be doing that. I'm happy the minority leader is saying to us that Parliament should consider ourselves as a serious institution. We can't blow hot and cold. And you cannot elect to play to the gallery when, when the facts point to a different direction. Mr. Speaker, now, the first principle, we should all be worried, because the first principle of any international relations is that we should seek to promote and protect the interests of a particular country. In this case, Ghana. And indeed, Article 48 of the Constitution talks about that. The speaker, for emphasis, let me quote Article 48 of the, of the 1992 Republican Constitution. It provides, in its dealings with other nations, the government shall, 40, A, promote and protect the interests of Ghana. That's why we should be worried. Mr. Speaker, if people without any question marks from anywhere want to enter Ghana, they apply for visas to be granted them for entry into Ghana. Mr. Speaker, if a people are a subject of agreement before they are allowed to enter this country, you should, at the very outset, accept the principle that there are question marks on them. Otherwise, why should they be a subject of agreement in the first place? Why couldn't they walk to our embassy and seek visa to come to the island? Mr. Speaker, so it is worrying. This pretext is worrying. And the fact that it is said that there is an allegation against them that they were alleged to be terrorists doesn't mean that indeed and in truth they were terrorists. It's an allegation that we should interrogate. An allegation has been made against the Ministry of Trade that they engage in cash, cash for seats. You have brought it to Parliament for Parliament to investigate. 
You are brought in here. Papa, I need to investigate. Mr. Speaker, so if an allegation should be a subject of interrogation and due diligence. So, after all, right, you don't just say that I, I on, on, on humanitarian grounds, I'm accepting when there will be, there may be a risk to your own citizens. There may be, they may pose a risk to your own citizens. Mr. Speaker, today, we, 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 the people who are saying that we should treat them on humanitarian and compassionate grounds are saying that, no, oh, let's take them somewhere. They have a country. Yes, they have a country called Yemen. But we all do know what is happening in Yemen. Should we throw them to the dogs? If they came from Syria, knowing what is happening in Syria, would you say that they should be sent back to Syria? Would you say that on humanitarian grounds? and compassionate grounds. We keep them. Good. So now you are saying that, oh, let's disregard everything. Let's send them back. Mr. Speaker, so, so let's be principled and consistent. That's the Majority Leader in Parliament, Osei Chemen Sabunsu, uh, reacting to concerns raised by the Minority Leader, Haruna Idrisu. Uh, they're speaking on a statement delivered by the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Shelly Ayokopotri, on the status of the Gitmoto in Ghana. That'll be all for this edition of Joy News Today, but we'll take you back to Parliament uh, to get more reactions on that statement. The Minister responsible for Foreign Affairs and the ministers of interior and defense and indeed of national security to combine their efforts to continue to monitor the people while they are here if any untoward things should happen they should quickly come together to inform parliament and then we'll go ahead and do what is right to promote and indeed protect the interests of the good people of this country. The speaker, for now, I am very satisfied with the promptness of the response from the ministry and indeed the minister responsible for foreign affairs. And I will urge that he acts with such dispatch as she has displayed in this case regarding any other matter that may be relevant to the promotion and protection of the interests of the people of this country. The Speaker, thank you very much for the opportunity. Order. Honorable Minister, the, in the meantime, the thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, in wrapping up, I'd like to thank honorable members for their contribution, but also to touch on two issues that I believe need clarity. Mr. Speaker, the first issue is to do with the lack of an exit strategy that accompanied the agreement. That is a fact. Mr. Speaker, I want to say that when I took over as the Minister for Foreign Affairs, I found it necessary to engage the American Embassy, the Ambassador specifically, and he did confirm that no such arrangement had been discussed. Mr. Speaker, I did it because I felt it was necessary because of the sentiments that had been expressed by Ghanaian. And, I find in, 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 during the meeting, it became clear that nothing of the sort had been agreed upon. Mr. Speaker, I felt that one important way to solve this issue and clean it up was to see if a third country would receive the two. 
Unfortunately, we found out at the very last minute during my negotiations that they had been granted refugee status and that they are indeed refugees in Ghana. This meant that they could only leave this country if they consented. So, Mr. Speaker, it has been quite difficult and we still continue to look at ways in which we can clean this thing up, but for now, it is impossible to do anything about it because they are legally resident here as a result of them being granted refugee status. In conclusion, I did say in my statement that we are constrained as a government to explore any other option at this time. But then we will await an in-depth examination of the issues by the appropriate agency. So, Mr. Speaker, I would like to assure the people of Ghana that, yes, this is where we are, uh, uh, this is where we are at now. Our hands are indeed tied, we will but the foreign committee, the foreign we will continue to find ways out, if it's the wish of Ghana. I thank you for your, the opportunity that you've given me. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very well, honourable members, thank you. It is way past one hour. I regret that there are other statements that were otherwise admitted, but we can't take them today. So we'll proceed with the other matters. At this stage, are you done? If you are, we'll continue. Very well. At the commencement of public business, presentation of papers. First one, item number four by the Honorable Majority Leader and Minister for Parliamentary Affairs. Report of the Auditor General on the statement of foreign exchange receipts and payment of the Bank of Ghana for the second half year and then 31st December 2016. Honourable no members, the report is duly late. So those were live visuals from Parliament, uh, Foreign Affairs Minister Shelley Ayukopetri, uh, given a statement on the floor about the status of the Gidmo too. Now, according to her, there was no exit plan uh, when she became a foreign affairs minister or when the agreement between uh, the former Muhammad administration and the then Obama administration was agreed on. And that's why uh, it's been difficult determining the status or what to do with the Gidmo too. She also added uh, that agreeing to give the two refugee status has given them a legal residence in Ghana. And in fact, she did mention that the two have family here in Ghana. She uh, also added that the hands of government, uh, the hands of government are tied and they will proceed to look at ways to deal with this problem and uh, possibly draft an exit plan if that's the wish of Ghanaians. We'll be picking up more reactions on this and uh, before she gave her, her final uh, statement or made her final statement, the minority leader Haruna Idrisu and majority leader Osei Chemen Sabonso had spoken on the matter.
Uh, Mr. Harina Idrisu said that there was no need to politicize the issue and that it, it must be looked at as, as a foreign uh, policy issue, not as an NDC NPP issue, as the minister uh, sought to do according to him. Uh, but the my majority leader disagreed with him and said uh, the two parties uh, that translates to the two different governments have different opinions on this matter and so um, it's, it's quite difficult to say they shouldn't be looked at uh, based on each perspective. Uh, but then we'll be bringing you more reactions on this. My colleague Joseph Apukugapo is in Parliament and uh, we'll be going there shortly. In fact, um, the Minister is currently addressing some press people in Parliament. January 2018 for them. The American government in the agreement ceases to be a partner to this agreement in terms of the obligations post 6 January and therefore we are left with our obligations and that is to try and and integrate them into Ghanaian society which is what the government then did by granting them refugee status this this issue Yes, directly has, uh, involves the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but there are other ministries that are also dealing with it. The other ministries are in direct contact with the two. We are not. We deal with the foreign policy aspect of it, the foreign relations aspect of it, because it involves another country, which is the, uh, the United States. But we are, we, are, we are in the middle of discussions. These are matters of security, of a security nature, and therefore I don't want to, to disclose anything. But that is why I left the, uh, my, my statement open-ended. And I said that we are still consulting and we will uh, examine what we get from other agencies. And I think that is key. That is key in coming out, that is key. That needs to, to come out clearly that the matter has not uh, uh, been concluded. So it's not that they are staying definitely, uh, and, and, and that uh, it's a conclusive decision that they are, going, they are going to continue to stay in the country. For now, we are saying that our hands are tied because they have been granted a, a, a legal status for them to stay here. Okay. Yes. No, we are still, we are still, we are still exploring the options. For on our side, we are still, I'm still going ahead to explore options. But you say, while we are that, the obligation to them from the government of Ghana continues. What exactly does those obligations entail? Are we still feeding them? Are we accommodating them? How much is that possibly costing? There are security obligations in the interest of our country. That will continue. What does that entail? What exactly does that I cannot disclose that. But, but, but when you have people who have been surveilled for two years, you don't just cut the surveillance after two years. Definitely you will have to continue the surveillance. Yes. You see now they have family in Ghana. You, 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 you mentioned something like that. Yes. The, the, the two since they came to Ghana, um, both of them have married. Yes. Are they married to Ghanaians? Married Ghanaians. No, not to Ghanaians. Not to, they are not married to Ghanaians. And, and they also came from outside to join them. And, and the, I believe so. I believe so. They are not and, married to Ghanaians. And our obligations to them then uh, and, until they, they are married spouses as well, I guess? Yes, they married within the two years that the U.S. obligations um, had to take care of them, included taking care of them. Yes, so they, they, were, take, they were taking care of them and their families. We don't have financial obligations towards them. Yes, we don't have. From 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 where I sit, we do not have any financial obligations towards them. I believe that these are questions that you must ask uh, the Ministry for National Security. They would have details of this. Where I sit in my office, I don't have these details. I have the details that have to do with the agreement, what the agreement says. Anything that is behind the curtain of the agreement, 
I am not. I am not privy to. Was this a bad deal? I, 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 I think that it was not a good deal, and um, and it's evident from the sentiments that have been expressed by Ghanaians and continue, they continue to express the fact that they are not comfortable that uh, the two were accepted and they live with us. But on the other hand also, the reports that I have been giving um, are that they are of good behavior, they, they haven't been engaged in anything untoward and um, therefore judging from on, on that basis then you can say that they, they haven't, um, there's no need for us to, to be concerned really? at, this, at this point. Mm -hmm. But I, I still believe that um, we will continue, uh, we won't leave it at that, we'll continue to, to um, look at options. Okay. And I, I have a few options in mind which uh, were sort of... Um, are, are I've already said it, I even said it on the floor, that options like looking at whether a third country will accept them and so on and so forth. These are all options that are, are open to I'm us. And, but they must, they must, yes, but that is why I said earlier that whatever <coughs> option we present to them, they must consent to it. Sure. That is the bottom line because of their status. Yeah, the minority thinks you can revoke their status as refugees. And go ahead how, and do you, you how do you invoke, the, invoke, the for that to what, which, which what, which part of the law allows to revoke? They think we can't revoke that status that we granted them as a well, I, at, the, at the moment, I don't think so. But like I said, there is need for to examine the issue in detail even more than we have and look at what our, our real options are. Along the line, it emerged that something under fifty thousand dollars was transferred from the United States government to Ghana and that was going to be part of the arrangements for their upkeep. After yes. the two years, are we still going to be receiving such financial... No, 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 no. It's clear from the agreement that at the end of the two years, the United States um, obligations to them comes to an end. So whatever monies came for their upkeep, that's it. It's exhausted. It was calculated for two years. It's been exhausted. And then that that's... That's how it ends. The taxpayers of Ghana are going Definitely to not. Them? Definitely not. How? Definitely how? not. I do not have details. You shouldn't be asking me these I details. Um, they, I'm sure that they, 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 they are doing something in order to um, uh, keep body and soul together, not real work. Um, but I'm not too sure yet. I, I cannot answer that question because I'm not in direct contact with them. There are many nationals. Has any communication opened with the Yemeni government at all on how their case could possibly be handled? Do you know what is happening in Yemen? A lot is happening. A lot is happening. Is there a government that we can, we can um, deal with? No. There is no government in Yemen that we can deal with. So we are looking beyond Yemen. So you mentioned that options of them being taken back by third countries. A third country. And, and you said for some of them the, com the, the conversation has started already. Uh, which one specifically? I cannot say. For, now, for security reasons, I cannot give that kind of information. So my last question would be, for, for Ghanaians who are still concerned about their continual stay in the country, even after the expiration of the agreement, uh, what kind of assurances would you have for them? Well, the assurance that I can give is what I, I know, and that is number one, they are of good behavior and number two government will not relent on finding a way out but does yes. it look positive for you you said you've been engaged in some countries already does it look positive for you that they might perhaps accept them is the u.s government <laughs> assisting in finding the third country um, <laughs> i said post 6 january 2018 their responsibilities come to an end we are on our own basically per the agreement we signed we are on our own that's it. The positivities. Is it, are there good signs that some countries... Oh, yes, yes, yes. There are the, the, the good signs. There the, the were one or two good signs until um, we found out that they must consent, agree to it. So that's where we are at. Are they agreeing themselves? Will they I can't tell you now. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Foreign Affairs uh, Minister...
We'll take you back to Parliament shortly for a quick wrap on that. Uh, but there, uh, you just heard the Foreign Affairs Minister Shelly Ayokobutri reiterating some of the comments she made on the floor of Parliament on the status of the Gitmo 2. Let's head back to Parliament. Our colleague, uh, my colleague, Joseph Bukugako, is giving us a wrap on that. The minority leader, Harun Idrisu, uh, who has been making the point that the fact that they were granted uh, refugee status doesn't in any way uh, mean that uh, the deal itself was bad. We will get those details from the specific experts on, on, on those particular issues. But uh, Adam Utawakul is the MP for Damongo. You, you had the Minister for Foreign Affairs deliver the statements on the floor that the government that you were part of, the NDC, tied their hands in dealing with the Gitmo 2 issue, even after the expiration of the two-year contract. What do you say to them? How did we tie their hands? I Sign an agreement that they didn't have an exit plan. So if you have and you have an agreement, that hasn't been ratified by parliament. Because ratification is the final. So if you came and you are not satisfied with the agreement, you can renegotiate it. Just like they have renegotiated most of the agreement that has been entered. What prevents them from renegotiating it? Once they have their position, that those people were terrorists. And therefore, when they come, they will look at it into criticality. And the Supreme Court rule. It is an opportunity for them to do the best thing they think they could do. So they shouldn't be blaming the previous government. She says they were given refugee status and that, that tightened their hand. And that before they can force them out, unless they consent, thanks to the refugee status the government gave them. The, thank God, the, finally they concluded that they were not terrorists and they are not threat to Ghana as stipulated. So that means that at the end of the day, what we envisage that they were not threat to Ghana had come to stay. But two, refugee status, the minority leader, Honorable Haruna Idris, quoted clearly that they have the opportunity to revoke it if they think that they are a threat to Ghana. They could revoke it and repatriate them to Yemen. So why are they not revoking it? So you see, the fact of the matter is that the tangent they took when they were in opposition, when they came to government, they realized that what former President Mama did was the right thing. And that the pre former President Mama had indicated they are not a threat to Ghana. They have admitted that they are not a threat to Ghana. But they have to save their face, and that is what they could do. There are provisions the uh, Refugee Act, which they could go and revoke and return them. So they shouldn't think as if, for this matter, they cannot do anything. They've re renegotiated agreement. Even an agreement that we have ratified on this floor, they are looking for a way of revoking it. So therefore, when you come, you can revoke it, you can renegotiate it, I have an exit plan. You can revoke the refugee status, and then do whatever you think is most appropriate. But all in all, we have all agreed that the propaganda they played when in opposition did not work when they came to government because they realized that what the NDC government has done and former President Mama has done is the right thing. We'll see how the conversation pans out for that. That's the MP for Damangu, Adam Mutawakil there. Uh, the conversation is still continuing in the chamber as the House discusses other businesses, even after the main issues with the Gitmo 2 uh, statement came to an end, and then we'll see how it goes. Coming from Parliament, my name is Joseph Opokugako. Thank you very much, Joseph Apuku Gapu, for those updates there. Uh, wrapping up that conversation for now with the MP for Damongo, uh, NDC MP for Damongo, Adam Mutawakil. We'll be bringing you more reactions uh, in subsequent bulletins. Do make a date. I'm Ben Sabubedu. This is the Joy News Channel. To stay.